face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys? And welcome, of course, to part two, of course, of the winners and losers of this generation. And my god, I did actually manage. I was not sure I was going to be able to make this list before Generation 7 hit off, but hey, here we are, and we actually did it. And the usual disclaimers is, of course, that. No, they're based on my opinions. I'm usually wrong, so you know, hell, if you're a different opinion, be sure to, of course, share that. As these five spots are, of course, things that I think are changes that are big enough to make these things, of course, a win of this generation. They're so big that they shift momentum and shift tears in the Smogons, and it's just worth mentioning overall. So, with that said, I'm not gonna hold you much, much longer. Let's, of course, enjoy this list. So at the number 5 spot we have of course the poison type and I was debating which spot this one should really have but sadly it is the last of the winners uh, when it comes to this. Uh, should be noted poison type actually got a big buff this generation mainly actually being able to deal with fairy types fairly well. Aren't there really a lot of fairy types that can do well to, against the poison types? A few of them have psychic moves can do something and that is at best to be honest. But it should be noted, not the solo poison types like Mako Weezing are the winners, more the dual types. So the likes of Drogology, um, Drapion, Toxicove, Nido King is the first one coming to my head. Even Among Us are the, definitely the winner, mainly because the combination makes them better. They are still having the resistances because the poison type still has the issue with the Earthquake Psychic moves that does hit it super effectively. Having the right combination make them slightly better and probably more so than, you know, your average mon, if anything. And of course, Dragology, new for this generation, with of course its new typing, was probably one of the few fairy killers as a dragon type, so super impressive, and it definitely showcased that due with the right combination with poison and a lack uh, typing, such of course dragon, yeah, very lack lacking, my bad, but uh, that it still could stand tall. That goes for a plethora of these mon, Drapion, definitely one of my favorite mon this generation, due to its being able to deal with the fairy type kind of efficiently, mainly because it's heat neutrally, but it's not affected by the psychic type, which usually are the overall response for dealing with poison type if you're a fairy. So poison type, number five spot, nothing really big to it, and I really hope Game Freak catches on that poison type needs a proper buff and gets even more tools here, of course, in the next generation. But as it stands today, definitely winners, I hope for more from them, definitely. Next one up was the one I had previous on my five spot, but I really had to move it forward, knockoff. And just knock off overall, not actually the Pokemon is actually benefit from it, even though I would say Absol and of course Bishop do benefit quite a lot from it. It actually was just overall knockoff is a pretty big winner as a move really. From generation 5 it had base power 20 to base power 65, that's quite the leap of 45 base power plus the buff of course when you knock off an item of 50% even getting bigger this time around. And the reason knockoff is such a big deal is not because it's such a spammable move and it's such a you know, um, supporting move to, of course, get rid of items. It is because there are so many fighting types. Of course, being able to not really deal that well with psychic types, usually, of course, they have payback, which is, of course, a slow move, or um, most of them lack crunch, sadly. With this, it could be utilized well. A lot of Pokemon that were naturally slower still could do damage and heavy as that. Knockoff, of course, with the boost not being a knight base move, pretty much could kill a psychic type due to really lack lustring overall defenses. So, Pokemon such as Kongelder, Machamp, um, Heracross got a lot more viable. I would say Heracross probably has uses of, of course, lack of Mega Horn, but still, Knockoff getting a pretty darn needed boost because that meant that the variety in the meta was broadened up and quite a lot at that. So, Knockoff, very, very easy for me to put in this spot and. Uh, it should be there, it should probably be a winner if the other ones weren't so severely good as they are. At number 3, Mega Pokemon. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, I couldn't avoid this whatsoever. It's been an issue for a lot of Pokemons lately that the older generation ones severely aren't made for the newer one that has been transpiring and 3 stages has always been the maximization that uh, Game Freak has gone off with. You know, you can't go further than that. Introduction to Mega Evolution. Basically solving what they could not by giving anything fourth evolution. They're, they're not rebranding it and sadly I should say not everyone is getting a new evolution separately, such a like a mobile. But what did we get instead? Well, 
something that are clearly made for the next level. Um, Beedrill got a relevance, Charizard got a relevance with two Mega Evolutions, Pidgeot got a relevance with No Guard Hurricane. There were so many things that got solved with Mega Evolutions. Note, note that not all Pokemon did get better, such of course as pseudo legendaries such as, oh, I don't know, Tyranitar and Garchomp. Gotten kind of bad, and definitely worse than they were previously, but take Solomon for example, who, well, ah, uh, right broken. Uh, there are a lot of Pokemons like that, and Mega Evolutions definitely stand as the stature of things to come, and Mega Evolution just opened up a door for a few Pokemons that never had a relevance in the first place. I'm definitely enjoying the most, I should say, Charizard's evolution, because it went from a never used Pokemon, of course, Generation 5, to. it, 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 it got. pretty around dangerous. It's always been an offensive mod, but now it could utilize it properly? Sweet. Good job on your Game Freak. And just Mega Pokemon overall, it's just such a mechanic that has not been seen before, and I love every part of it, even though a few of these guys clearly are broken. Just like, um, <clears throat> Kangaskhan, I don't know. <laughs> At number two, Defoggers. And just Defoggers overall. The reason one should mention Defoggers is for one clear reason it killed. Spin blockers. This kind of move and just a variety of it killed anything that the spin blocker were previous generations. Spin blockers were the champions of hazard stacking and blocking rapid spins. It is no longer an option. You can hazard stack, but it's no never a guarantee that you can keep these hazards up. It's like just a game changer overall. And the Pokemon that learned it are just Pokemon that are just famous for what they did previously. Take for example Skarmory and Empoleon, clearly resisting of course Stellarfrogs, or at least Skarmory takes neutral to it, and being able to not only set Stellarfrogs but now get rid of them? Yeah, and Skarmory probably stands a bit taller in this because it can actually, well, set up, but it was gonna roost and just exist in just all kinds of variety. There is a reason people hate Skarmory, and Empoleon, like I said, the same reason. Being able to both hazard stack and get rid of hazards? Yeah. That's um, that's annoying, and that's another layer to this Pokemon that we haven't been seen before. Crobat, for example, famous for his offensive presence, now could defog too. Wow, this was a Pokemon that could not get rid of Toxic Spikes, that were definitely a good poison type to some extent, but well, it didn't have, of course, the, the or was floating, which means it couldn't soak the Toxic Spike. Now being able to defog, yeah, that's, that's super annoying. But probably the biggest leap here is Manibus, who did all kinds of changes. Because a few of you didn't know, Manibus was actually more of an NU Pokemon back in Generation 5, mostly because he couldn't do necessarily anything. Dark and Flying, not really that relevant of a typing, though, though good, just not good enough. And of course, it wasn't really able to do damage since it was a pretty clear passive mod. And through Generation 6, it gets Defog? Awesome. It was actually the first one of the few breedable Defoggers at 2 because it started with X and Y could not use any type of Pokebank, only defog from you know, mandatory Pokemon, such as <clears throat> Mandibus. And of course, knockoff boost. Enter Mandibus now function properly. Mandibus was the clear indicator of a proper defogger, with overcoat and resisting, of course, the like of Sandstream. Yeah, it, it just got that much better. So defogger of all changed the man as we know it today. It killed a pretty much a go-to strategy from, of course, Generation 5. And just by that alone, it should be the indicated winner. But with that said, I do believe most of you guys know exactly who the winner of this generation is. And trust me, I want it to be the Defoggers, but it's no denying that the winners of this generation and the one that reigns supreme are still and should be... The Fairy Typing. Oh my god. I really... I'm, I'm not even joking here. I definitely didn't want it to be the Fairy Typing. But then, you know, once you go over all the fairy types, you realize, you know, the, the, it's the rebranding of the fairy types that makes the difference. The fairy types introduced in the generation, not that good, actually. Not necessarily that good. Mega Altari at best, maybe. But other than that, I mean, we have Dainchi, but it's a Mega Evolution that's not relevant. But it is the rebranded variants that definitely stands a lot, lot taller. Uh, they were something Fable, Game Changer, with an unaware. And yeah, it went from RU to OU, and it's the stature, it's the supreme Pokemon there. A Sumeril, pretty okay belly drummer in Generation 5, only Seer Water type. Now a defensive Water Fairy type with a big offensive presence. A bit slow, yes, but you can't kill it. It's it's hard to kill. 
It's it's a reason it gets there. Gramble, forgotten Pokemon. No, nobody care about Gra who. What is a Gramble? Yeah, exactly. That thing was not even worth caring for because it was a normal type. Nobody cared for it. And now, gets a fairy type. Intimidate you? What? Yeah. It just it just blew my mind how many ways these guys got better. So kids probably didn't gain all that much, but um, it's still a super annoying fairy type. Um, definitely good defensively. And um, of course, Gardevoir, Psychic Fairy, super good ability with, of course, Hyper Voice. Um, I mean, Pixelate with, of course, his Mega Evolution. But the one probably making the biggest leap is probably Mowal. Definitely a forgotten Pokemon. He's got a Mega Evolution. Clearly, he got a Mega Evolution. Awesome. But not only that, it gets the Fairy type and bond to it, making it a supreme Pokemon. Close a broken one at that. Because the thing that made Mowal. A bit more relevance, of course, in in you in your five was it still had a high attack, right? Uh, make that a high attack a bit more higher, a bit more bulkier, and give it pure power and just <laughs> it's over. I'm not really even joking. I was so glad that Mobile got a separate evolution. I really wanted Mobile, of course, to get a separate evolution, but getting a Mega Evolution and getting such a leap in relevance, focusing on the stats that matters. Yes, this thing. Got pretty darn broken. And to be completely honest, the reason fairy types are here overall, without rebranding itself and making them, of course, a lot, lot more relevant, is that it shut down, of course, the Supreme Dragon typing from previous generations. Not generation, generations. From Generation 3, Salomon, Scoff, Variant, whatever, has been reigned supreme for quite some time. Not being able to sweep anymore meant that that Pokemon was close to useless in the higher meta place. And just overall, fairy typing shut down any kind of Draco spamming. It basically shut down everything. Hydreigon, not even usable due to fairy typing alone. Scrafty, what is that? I I'm sorry, Dragon type just was gone at this point. Scrafty clearly not a Dragon type, and you still kind of suffered a lot, didn't it? But fairy types just definitely did the supreme winner of this generation. It was definitely a game changer and. The meta was basically changed forever, so that's why fairy types or rebranded fairy types are the winner of this generation. And that will actually be the wrap of this video. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you are of a different opinion, please make sure to share that. There weren't really that many changes in generation 6, but these changes definitely matter. And going into generation 7 with these in mind, one could only wonder how big of a shift can be made, and trust me. I am staying optimistic because it requires so little to do so much and fairy types defoggers clearly indicated that this is just the top of the iceberg of what Game Freak and the game designers can do with this game. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, make sure of course leave a like and stuff like that and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching everybody and take care. Bye.